What is going on my fellow nerds? Operator Otter here. And today, what I wanna discuss is an advanced mechanics guide building off of the Miasma Bone Spear build posted on my channel recently to help improve your performance and preparation for Abattoir of Zir. So, if you haven't watched that video, go watch that and then come back here as we will be building off knowing how the build works to now knowing how to play it. Bone Spear builds are some of the most engaging in that they have some of the highest DPS numbers among Necromancer builds when all of the controllable multipliers and buffs are up with proper positioning. But if played improperly, we can deal up to 8 times less DPS. So let's talk about it. First, let's discuss a core mechanic to Bone Spear I like to call the Shotgun Factor. Bone Spear as an ability has the main spear that goes out and then splits into 5 returning shards that spread out like a shotgun. Combined. These five shards with the splintering aspect in the amulet account for 70% of Bone Spear's total potential damage. Therefore, it's important to hit the main spear and all five shards on a target per Bone Spear cast. The most practical way to achieve this is to hit the target at max range of the Bone Spear so that the shards hit the target with the lowest possible spread. Another trick is to pull the elite to a wall that Bone Spear can collide with and use it to rebound the shards at a narrow angle. This is especially useful against suppressors, but it's not always possible. The distance mechanic is what we will utilize today for the combo. Now, let's discuss the controllable damage modifiers for the Black River Miasma Bone Spear build. These factors include Flesh Eater, Grasping Veins, Tibalt's Will, Control Glyph, and Enhanced Reap. Combined together, these factors give us a 278% increase in our total potential damage per second. In order for us to maximize our damage, we have to combine both of these concepts of the shotgun factor and controllable modifiers. So, let's create two identical scenarios that we will play differently. In each scenario, we will walk into a room and there are three elites spread out with some mobs. In the first scenario, let's say we enter a room with three elites and immediately we just start casting Bone Spear to kill the elites. The first issue with this tactic lies with the shotgun factor and our shards. With the elites spread out across the room and charging at us from different positions, we can't realistically hit all the elites with each Bone Spear cast until they are on top of us. And to make it worse, at no point will all five shards hit all three elites because they are spread and charging at us. When they finally do get on top of us, due to the shotgun factor, maybe only two shards will hit each elite instead of all five. This concept, by itself, lowers our DPS by about 48%. Going even further into the problem zone, because we never took the steps to turn on any of our controllable modifiers, we've slashed our potential DPS by a further 73.5%. This means, in the worst case scenario, we will deal 13.5% of the DPS versus the best case scenario. In the best case scenario, we enter the room and are able to get all the elites stacked into a specific position and have all of our controllable damage modifiers online to unleash hell upon them from an optimal position. Let's watch this scenario in which I don't even have Bone Storm up for defense, and then we will discuss how to perform this bread and butter combo in nearly every elite engagement. I need more time. First, we will cast a Cryptify to apply some damage reduction as we're about to run into this group and need some defense. Second, we cast two to three Bone Spears. This will create corpses on the ground for a Black River and Sacrilegious Ring combo to explode and spew Miasma on the ground. This in turn creates more corpses for our Flesh Eater to become permanently online as well as gives us a target corpse to cast Corpse Tendrils. Third, we cast Corpse Tendrils on the mob group. This will take two seconds to pop and pull everything in on top of each other and lock them down into a position for three seconds. It also activates our Grasping Veins aspect and Control Glyph. Fourth, we run into the group and cast Reap. This will prep the mob for death to give a 30% attack speed buff and some nice damage reduction. Do not cast Evade to enter the group. Run into the group. We will use the evade to reposition for the damage cycle. Fifth, we evade out with metamorphosis. This will activate Tibalt's will and position us for an optimal shotgun factor. Lastly, cast Bone Spear. And, well... Enemy AC the above! Let's go back to the dungeon example and watch one more time in slow motion. Look at how I engage it even without Bone Storm up and see if you can spot how I performed the combo. So, to reiterate, decrepify your targets, cast 2 or 3 Bone Spears, cast Corpse Tendrils on top of the Elites, walk up to the Elites, do not evade, cast Reap, 
evade out of the group, and start casting Bone Spear. That's combo number one, and it will be your bread and butter to dealing maximum DPS to an elite group, which will be very relevant in Avatar of Zir. At the moment, it does not feel necessary because our current DPS is high enough that we do not need to perform this combo to kill elites rather quickly. But make no mistake, Avatar of Zir is going to change that. Go to the training room in Kiovashad and start practicing. Combo number two will be utilizing a hot swap with Grandfather to optimize boss DPS. Before we start, I do want to put a disclaimer that this build does just fine in DPS against bosses without Grandfather. But if you are one of the lucky few who have obtained Grandfather or are motivated to obtain it, then buckle up buckaroos, because this is about to get spicy. Let us begin with discussing a vital aspect to creating efficient damage cycles with Bone Spear against bosses. This vital aspect is the Tybalt's Will unique passive that gives us 50 essence on becoming unstoppable. Since Metamorphosis makes us unstoppable for 4 seconds and the cooldown on our evade is 5 seconds, this pairs perfectly to utilize this instant resource regeneration on cooldown. Now, let's showcase this combo that will allow you to endlessly cast Bone Spears against the boss while hot swapping Grandfather. At this point, most T100 bosses will be dead if playing solo as seen here. But when playing with a full party, or possibly for Abattoir of Zir, the boss will most likely not die from this opening combo. This means we have to move forward with the combo, so let us continue. To perform this combo, we will engage the boss with Black River and Littlest to utilize its superior corpse production. First cast to Crepify, then 5 Bone Spears against the boss. This will spawn at least 3 corpses for Flesh Eater stacks and Miasma to create an infinite corpse spawn chain. From here, we will cast Bone Storm, then Corpse Tendrils to activate our Grasping Veins, swap to Grandfather, and then dash to an optimal position. From here, we create the infinite combo. Now we will cast Bone Spear until the cooldown on our evade reaches zero. The reason we look at the evade cooldown is that it acts as a sort of timer for our damage cycle and that our grasping veins last six seconds. Once your evade reaches zero, cast Tendrils, then Decrepify. Hot swap back to Black River and Littlest, dash to an optimal position, and launch Bone Spears until the evade is at one second. Then, cast Tendrils, Decrepify, dash, and start cycling Bone Spears again. From here, we will hold down the trigger until Bone Storm comes off cooldown. Once Bone Storm is off cooldown, we cast Bone Storm, then Tendrils, then Decrepify, and Hot Swap to Grandfather, and dash to an optimal position and start cycling again. This brings us back to the start of the combo and we repeat. Another way of thinking about this is one cycle with Grandfather and then two cycles with Black River and Lilith. It's challenging. But so will Abattoir of Zir, so if you're up to the challenge, I would practice this combo against the target dummy in Kiovashad, and then go out into a dungeon and try it in tandem with dodging boss mechanics. Let's go over the combo one more time. The opener is as such. The Crepify, 5 Bone Spears, Bone Storm, Tendrils, Hot Swap, Evade. From here, the infinite combo begins. Cycle 1 with Grandfather. Bone Spear until Evade cooldown is 0 seconds and then cast Tendrils. Decrepify, hot swap back to Black River, Lidless, and Evade. Cycle 2 with Black River, Lidless. Cast Bone Spear until 1 second on Evade, then cast Tendrils, Decrepify, and Evade. Cycle 3 with Black River, Lidless. Cast Bone Spear until Bone Storm comes off cooldown, then cast Tendrils, Decrepify, hot swap to Grandfather, and Evade. We now return back to Cycle 1 and repeat until the boss is dead. Before I go, 
I do want to inform you all that after discussion with some other Blaster Boys, there have been some changes in the Black River Miasma Bone Spear build. We will be switching from Deathless Visage to Rare Helm with Max Essence, Total Armor, Max Life, and Cooldown Reduction with the Disobedience Aspect. This puts us at 15,000 armor, which should be enough for maximum physical resistance and Abattoir of Zir. But, if we need more for later levels of Abattoir, we may have to run an amulet that swaps CDR for armor in the amulet. I personally have my damage reduction and armor amulet ready to give me further defense, so bring it on. We will also be replacing exploit in the Paragon board with control, since the bosses in Abattoir will be seekers that are able to be CC'd, and then tears will replace amplify in the flesh eater board. That's all I have for you. Have a wonderful day and good hunting. Operator Otter, out.